Well, we're glad you're joining us for RU this evening. Reformers Unanimous is a faith-based addictions recovery program, and it's based on Bible principles, and we're glad about that. We're going to get started tonight like we normally do. We'll have a short video uh, from one of the leaders of RU presenting one of the principles, principle number seven for tonight. My name is Bob Reed. I'm the RU director at the Bible Baptist Church in Grove City, Ohio. This evening, we're going to be talking about principle number seven. Our sinful habits do hurt those who follow us. Our sinful habits do hurt those who follow us. Another way of saying that is uh, you, are, you will be an influence to those who hang around you. What is influence? Influence, uh, by definition, is the ability of a person to compel others to think, feel, or behave in a specific manner. Let me say that again. Influence. The ability of a person to compel others to think, feel, or behave in a specific manner. The scripture talks uh, quite a bit about influence, and uh, it it talks in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. What we say, what we do, how we act is going to uh, affect those around us. How about Proverbs 13, 20? He that walketh the wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. When I was younger... I, uh, had, I was in a youth group, and um, I was the youngest kid in my youth group. Somehow they let me get in somewhere around 12 uh, years old, and we had a few older boys there. They were probably 17, 18, 19, and I looked up to these guys. I thought they were just the greatest of men. Uh, as a young kid, I, I saw them as men, and uh, we went to the same preacher boy classes together. We, we did a lot of things uh, together. They let me hang around them, you know, and um, so I thought so much of them. And when these guys decided to take a worldly direction in life, I was absolutely crushed because I followed them. I, I, I wanted to read, uh, hold the same Bible they held. I wanted to walk the same walk that they walked. I wanted to, but when, when they went off a different direction, it crushed me. This happened not once, twice, but actually three times in the course of that youth group. And I, I, I did recognize very soon that our sinful habits do hurt those who follow us. It's been said that what uh, parents do in moderation, children will do in excess. Isn't that the truth? And uh, our, our, our children obviously watch us, and they follow us, and they, they see what we do. I have four children, my wife and I do, and they're, they're wonderful. They think their daddy can do no uh, wrong. They, they just uh, absolutely love their daddy, but... They love doing things exactly like me, but the problem is I see that the things that my children struggle with, and I recognize that those are the same things that they see in me, they hear in me, they watch me do, but they sometimes are even compounded. The mother or father's frustration will turn into the children's anger. The mother or father's discontentment will turn into the children's greed. The mother or father's negative attitude will turn into the children's criticism. Remember, the habit you feel only hurts you affects those who follow you. There's a, a gentleman at the prison that we work at. His name's Tim, and he, he recognized this principle very uh, early on. As we saw him go through the uh, prison and go through the uh, RU Inside material, we met his son, came through the same prison. Then a few months later, later, we met his cousin, came through the same prison. And he recognized, you know what? The sinful habits that uh, he engaged in hurt those who were following him. Sin, it will take you farther than you want to go, and it will affect more people than you think it will affect. It's kind of like a book of matches here. We have uh, all kinds of folks in our lives. We have mothers and Fathers and parents and siblings and aunts and uncles and uh, all, all kinds of folks that are around us. And they're close to us. What happens when we start doing what we're not to do? Everybody else is deeply affected as well because those who are close to us, it affects those who follow them. And they'll be burnt as well. Romans 14, 7 says, none of us live to himself and no man dieth to himself. We're not going to live 
just affecting ourselves. We're not going to die just affecting ourselves. Here's the question I want to ask this evening. What is it that we're unwilling to give up, even if it means it will hurt those who are within your sphere of influence? What is it that we're unwilling to give up that means that this habit will negatively impact those around us? Are we unwilling to give up the drinking? Are we unwilling to give up the smoking or the drugs or the weed or the lying or the cheating or the stealing or the shoplifting or the anger or the pornography or the coveting or the worry or the hatred? What is it that we're unwilling to give up tonight? Even though we know it's going to hurt somebody else. Who are you willing to hurt, continue to hurt, in order to hold on to your addiction? To the expectant mom tonight, the drugs that you are ingesting are not just hurting you, they will affect your new baby. To the father and mother, or the, to the father and husband, those pills that you are, are taking aren't just affecting your body and your mind and your emotions. The effects of those hurt your wife, your children, your grandchildren. Scripture is pretty clear in Exodus 20 that those who uh, worship or serve someone other than God that those iniquities are passed on to the third and fourth generation. Our sinful habits do hurt those who follow us. To the shoplifter, when you steal from the store, it increases the prices of everybody else there. You don't even know who all it's, in, it's affecting. It's not even those who are just immediately in your family or friends. It's affecting others as well. To the son... Your sinful habits are devastating to your mother. Proverbs says that a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. To the man or the woman, married or not, acting upon, looking at, or thinking about someone lustfully is damaging not only to you and your relationship with God, but also to the relationships you will form now in the years to come. Remember, principle number seven. Our sinful habits do hurt those who follow us. Most likely, this is one of the reasons you came tonight. This is one of the reasons you've come to the RU Recovery Program. You may have seen a sign out there. You may have received a, a, a tract. You may have received a brochure. But you said, you know what? I am seeing that some things that I'm doing are hurting those around me. I'm seeing that the, the habits that I am engaging in have hurt those around me. But you know what? You're in the right place tonight. Praise the Lord. You are here. Because I, will, I believe that soon you will be turning those sinful habits into righteous routines. And they will begin affecting those around you in a positive way. You have a choice. You can either allow our sinful habits to hurt those who follow us or allow those positive things, those good things to affect others around you as well. It goes both ways. Again, principle number seven, our sinful habits do hurt those who follow us. All right, we'll get started. Uh, you know, are you, we have a motto called talk, talk, talk. And it's three talks. That's kind of how our night is normally structured. We have a moment of Prayer and thanksgiving to God, where we take praise and testimonies. We have a moment of talk where we learn from the Bible and we have some talking from God's Word to our hearts. And then we'll usually divide up into small groups and we take a moment just to talk to each other in those group settings. Of course, by way of the video, we'll skip two of those talks. We're going to go right to our lesson. Uh, if you do have any prayer requests, though, or something that you would like us to be praying for, please reach out to us. Uh, you can reach us through our church website, our phone numbers. You can reach out to me or Pastor personally, and we would love to be praying for you. If there's something specific we can be praying for, please let us know, and we'd be glad to do that. So we're going to take our Bibles this evening. We're going to get started with, uh, let's say, Psalms chapter 37. Psalms chapter 37 and verse number 23. And we're just, we've been talking about the steps of a good man. And the Bible says in Psalms 37 and verse 23, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. 
and we see that the Bible makes it clear that, you know, there's, there's, there is a way that is right. You know, there, there is a way that a good man should be walking. You know, some will say that, you know, it's hard to tell right from wrong today and, or, you know, there's, it's gray areas and, but clearly here in the Bible, there is a good way. You know, there is a preferred way of living our life that God recommends for us. And when you're walking in that way, the Bible says that God's hand is there helping us. He's protecting us. Uh, it's more easy to recover quickly when we make mistakes. If we are on that right, right way and we're trying to do what's right, the steps of a good man, the Bible calls it. And so we've been each week talking about uh, a certain step. And I believe we have seven of them. We're on the fourth one. Tonight we're talking about men and women who are walking right will have a separated walk. A separated walk. And we're going to talk about what that means tonight. Um, this goes right along with, you know, are you principle number six? If you joined us last week, we covered principle number six last week, and it kind of goes, it just works out that it kind of goes with our lesson this week. And principle number six is those who do not love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. And you know, if we want to, you know, it's not easy to always do what's right. You know, it's not easy to always take a stand. It's not easy to, you know, it, it's hard in our flesh to get up in the morning and to read our Bible and to pray sometimes. It's hard to make the decisions that are good for us. And that could be a challenge. And it could be hard for even the best Christians among us to continually live right. It's hard. And, you know, we fall sometimes. But it only gets harder when you mix in the wrong kind of friends, when you mix in the bad crowd. And, you know, those who don't help, those people who don't love God, you know, people around you who don't care about God, they don't know God as their Savior, Maybe they do and they're not interested in living for him. Those type of people are never going to make it easier on you. It's never going to be easier to do what's right when you're around the wrong type of people. That means people that don't love God. Uh, so we need to be careful who we're surrounding ourselves with. Um, the Bible says that, let's go to Proverbs 11 and verse 14. Proverbs 11, 14. We know the Holy Spirit will influence us. Um, he will help us. He will guide us in our steps and ordering our steps if we have the right kind of friends, though. You know, the wrong kind of friends can be bad, but the right friends, good Christian friends, can be used of God and used of the Holy Spirit to influence our life, to help us walk in that right walk. Proverbs 11 and verse 14. And just, just look at the end of that. You know, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You know, without, without counselors, without friends to help you, you know, sometimes we... There's always going to be some advice that's thrown at us. You know, people are quick to throw the bad advice to give their opinions, whether they're an expert or not. Everybody thinks they are. Uh, but in the multitude of counselors, you know, good, solid counselors, people that you can look up to and respect in an area. You know, if I need advice on something, I go to someone who knows about that subject. You know, if I had a problem with my car and it was broken down, I'm not going to go to just the first random person, you know, who, who knows nothing about cars and ask their opinion. I want to find someone I know who knows about that. Uh, you know, if I, if I have a, a question about construction or something, or, you know, maybe I'm trying to build something or a piece of furniture, you know, and I have a question, I might go to my dad. You know, he's a professional carpenter. He's done this before. He's built furniture. Uh, he's built houses. He's done everything. You know, I, I could ask him a question if I had it. I'm not going to ask my mother a carpentry question. Uh, not that she couldn't figure something out, but she doesn't have the experience there. You know, and you know, if, if I feel like I'm sick, or I feel like there's something wrong, you know, I, I think maybe it's something serious. Maybe I have the coronavirus, right? And I'm not going to ask my wife what her opinion is, and you know, maybe I'll talk to her about it, but I'm not going to ask her medical questions. You know, I go to a doctor, and we, that's common sense. It, it makes sense to us. But so many times when it comes to spiritual areas, when it comes to deep, important life questions, you know, we, we turn to the people who are just the most convenient. Or we turn to the people who are the most outspoken. And we have these serious questions of life or problems. And if we're not careful, you know, while there's, there are places to go to get good godly advice, spiritual guidance from a pastor, and if we're not careful, we just turn to, you know, our friend. And maybe they're a great friend. Maybe they're a great person. Um, depending on who they are, though, they may not be greatly spiritually qualified. You know, maybe they have an opinion on the Bible. They have opinions on church. But are they walking with God? Are they close to God? Are they a spiritual person? And in this one area, you know, the area of our counselors, the area of people who influence us, we need to be more careful. We need to be surrounding ourselves with biblical counselors because in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Not in the multitude of people with an opinion. Not in the multitude of 
just good friends who you know want to help us out but actual counselors people who know what they're talking about and when it comes to the difficulties of life when it comes to spiritual matters or things that we struggle with go to someone spiritual you know go to someone who talks to god who is close to god and ask them for counsel go to god himself and ask for counsel but the holy spirit will help us order our steps through the through the advice and through the help, through the influence, I should say, of our good friends, good Christian friends. Um, and just as much as the wrong crowd can make it hard for us, those right friends can really help. And just one more point, we'll be done. Um, some friendships, though, you know, some friendships can greatly hinder our walk with God. Some friendships, they can greatly hinder our walk with God. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 14. If you just want to wait for me to turn there, I'll read it. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14. The Bible says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? You know, and that is exactly what we do when we are around the wrong type of friends. And when, when you have a friend who doesn't love God, and you know, they have different goals in life than you should have. And if you have the same goals, then you have a problem. Uh, but if, if you have friends who don't love God and they're not close to God, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll work with people or we'll have family members or we just, you know, we happen to be around people who may not agree with us and things of life. And there's only so much we can do about that. But be, I'm talking about your friends, the people you choose to spend time with, you know, the people that you choose to hang around, the people, these are people that you are choosing to be influenced by. You may think that you're the good influence, but if you're hanging around them, they're going to influence you. And the people that influence us, are the people we spend the most time with, the most time listening to, the most time studying, the most time helping even, and they influence us. And just be careful because the Bible says, you know, a, a Christian, a believer, has no business being yoked up. That means, you know, teamed up on the same team, just like picture, you know, two oxen, two cows, and they're, they're being used to plow the fields in the old days, and they have a yoke across their neck, and it, it's holding two of them together. They're working together as a team, and us as a believer, the Bible says, we have, we have no business being teamed up on the same team, on the same goals with someone who's not a believer. Because we don't have the same goals. We shouldn't have the same goals. Uh, as someone who doesn't believe in God, you know, we shouldn't have that fellowship because their life is full of darkness. It doesn't mean they're a bad, awful person. It means they're just as bad of a person as you would be without the Holy Spirit in you. Just as bad a person as you were before you met Jesus. And we have no business you know, being teamed up with that, having the same goals as that, choosing to let that influence our life. And it will. Uh, you know, Romans 16, verse 17. This will be the last place we turn. Romans 16, and we'll look at verse 17 and 18. The Bible says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. So he says, you know, notice and mark them. That means, you know, notice it. Um, you know, look at that person. Realize who I'm talking about. Those people who cause divisions or problems against what you've been taught from the Bible. In verse 18, for they are, I'm sorry, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And that means by their own belly means, you know, their own flesh, their own desires. They, they serve whatever they want. By the good works and fair speeches, and they deceive the hearts of the simple. He's saying there's people out there that, that will, they kind of make it their goal or mission in life, or maybe some of them, they, they just happen to be doing it all the time, but the, they're people who are constantly just coming up with excuses or things that go against what the Word of God says. And they're coming up with different ideas and different philosophies against what God has already said in His Word. And they're doing things that just because it's things that please them, that please their bellies, they please their flesh. It helps them feel better about themselves or their outlook on life. And if we're not careful, it says their fair speech. You know, they can be very manipulative. They can sound very convincing. Some of these people can say things that sound good. It sounds right. It sounds convincing. And if you're not careful, we can, you know, be swayed. We can be influenced by them. And let's make sure we know our doctrine. We know what the Bible says. And we need to be careful staying around people like that. People that don't love God, that don't serve God. And they may be, you know, great people otherwise. But their goals aren't the same as ours. Their philosophies aren't the same as ours. And they can't be. And they shouldn't be. You know, if they're true to what they believe and they, they really sincerely don't believe in God, 
then that's going to lead them down some wrong choices in life. And it's going to mess up their philosophy and that's going to mess up you if you're not careful. Because these people can be smart and convincing sounding and we need to be careful what type of people we're hanging out with. Uh, that's what the Bible's talking about when it says having a separated walk. It doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean we're, we're separated and, you know, we live in a cardboard box or, you know, a, a glass box or whatever, and we're separated somewhere, and, you know, we, we don't let anyone touch us or come near us. And that's not what it's talking about. It's saying there should be something distinctly different about a Christian, about how he walks, about how he talks, about how he lives. And men and women, we should be separated in our walk. Not as in we're, you know, we're just far, far, far away from everybody else, but separated as, as in we are distinct. We are different, and we are different than the rest of this world. Not because we're better, not because we're smarter, but it's because of who is living in us and who we're living for and what our goals should be because of that. And that should drive us to be going, you know, a different direction in life than everybody else's. We have no business, you know, hanging around and having the same goals that they do. And men and women of a separated walk, that's, that's one of those steps of a good man. If you want to be blessed by the Lord, you want to be able to please Him, you want to do the best you can to be upheld by His hand. Now you can please Him by having that separated walk. By just, you know, maybe we need to just step back this week. Step back and just take a look at, you know, who your friends are. And who, who do you choose to hang around with? And just think about those. And maybe a couple of those, we can, we can make some better decisions there. Maybe some of those people, you know, maybe we shouldn't be hanging around them. And it's going to be hard, you know, when this, this virus ends and our... Our, our isolation at home ends. We're going to want to go out and catch up with old friends and, and hang out again and have fun and party a little. And we need to be careful about which crowds we end up jumping right into. And just I would challenge you on that, you know, the steps of a good man. And one of them is being separated in our walk. You know, those who do not love the Lord, they will not help you to live and serve God. Well, thank you for joining us. And let's have a word of prayer and we'll be done this evening. Dear Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we would have that separated walk. Lord, work in each of our lives. All of us have, you know, it's hard because we, we live in a, a dirty world. We live in an imperfect world. We, we work around imperfect people and trying to be a Christian, Lord, and to love them and to help them and maybe be involved in their life a little bit. Now, Lord, I just pray that you would help us to know where to separate ourselves or where to keep it separate, where not to be yoked unequally with unbelievers. I just pray that you would help us to see that in our life. Lord, if there's anyone that's struggling with this area now, I just pray you'd give them wisdom in dealing with it, help them to make the right decision. Lord, help us to be full of your spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. Like I said, if any of you need prayer, uh, you have a special request, maybe please reach out to us. Uh, you can contact us by calling the church number, uh, reaching us through our, our email or message us online. Uh, through Facebook. Any way you can get a hold of us, go ahead and do it and just send us any prayer requests you have. We'd love to pray for something specific. Uh, hopefully we can see you guys again soon. Take care and have a great evening.